Hi, Ingrid here with the week 14 recap of Ethan and Ingrid's 2024 big year. As a fourth grade teacher, I never had much patience for bullying. I did not tolerate it in the classroom. I did not tolerate it on the playground or on the school bus. Even though I'm now retired and doing a big year, I was forced to watch it on the playground once again, the bird playground that is. The Baraline Hummingbird is endemic to Mexico, but every once in a while one crosses into the U.S. and ignites a chase among birders. Such was the case with the recent sightings of one in Madera Canyon, Arizona. Situated 25 miles southeast of Tucson, Madera Canyon sits in the Santa Rita Mountains and is part of the Coronado National Forest. In addition to pristine hiking trails and incredible views, the canyon hosts a large diversity of birds and thus many birders. In fact, there are lodges and cabins that cater to our people. They place seed and nectar feeders on the property and strategically place chairs for comfortable viewing. Yeah, birding is rough stuff. On our first visit, there were several birders assembled all bemoaning the fact that the bear line's preferred feeder was empty. The wind did not help either, as birds, like people, tend to hunker down in those conditions. So, after an hour, we headed back to Patagonia. The next evening, we were supposed to go owling at night, but the wind remained high, it was raining, and we even saw some hail. So, we bagged the owls and tried for the bear line's hummingbird again. This was when the bullies arrived. Parked within a few feet of each feeder was a single Rivoli's hummingbird, each determined to prevent the bear lines and anyone else from getting near their nectar. Once known as the magnificent hummingbird, the Rivoli's is large, beautiful, and very aggressive. It will try to impale any other hummingbird that enters his or her empire. So, for two hours in the rain, we watched the poor bear line attempt to get to the feeder and fail each time. I really dislike bullies. We did see a Kawatamundi wander by. Now that is one weird animal. Neither one of us had seen one before. Is there such a thing as lifer mammals? The next evening was calm and cold, ideal for owls. So we donned our finest L.L. Bean winter gear and headed out to meet our guide, Jake Thompson. On the way, we stopped one last time at the bear line feeders and only one Rivoli's sentry remained, and the bear line was able to slip in unnoticed by the guard over and over. We finally got a photo. At the top of the canyon, we met Jake, strapped on our headlights, and set off up Old Baldy Trail. I find the term Old Baldy both offensive and triggering. Thank you, Ethan. I'll get right on sending the park a letter. As we climbed, the night grew darker. Ethan and I began to stumble over rocks and sticks as we looked up into the trees and listened for owls. The altitude didn't help. Occasionally, we would stop and listen, and Jake made repeated whistles, spot-on imitations of the spotted and northern pygmy owls. Before long, we heard the two-call note of a northern pygmy owl, and the whiskered screech owl showed up, in the parking lot, of course, Getting a spotted owl had always been a long shot. We'll try again later in the year. We spent five nights in Patagonia, Arizona, using it as a base to head out in numerous directions for birds, including Patagonia State Park, the Patton Center for Hummingbirds, Box Canyon, and Kanoa Ranch. Most nights, we would return home to Patagonia and run headlong into a comical band of javelina carousing and browsing among neighborhood gardens and trash cans. Javelinas are a cute but stinky wild pig that roam the streets of Patagonia at night. Onward to Tucson and Phoenix, we were impressed by how quickly the scenery changed. Ocotillo cactus were more prolific. The suddenly abundant and majestic saguaro cactus even more so. Spring in the desert is stunning. Both Tucson and Phoenix are lovely cities with gorgeous parks and open space and a lovely, warm, dry April climate that we reveled in. One of our primary goals in Phoenix was to see the rosy-faced lovebird. When we arrived on Thursday afternoon, we searched areas where they had been recently seen. We thought this was going to be an easy one. 
but no love birds revealed themselves to us. What to do about this turn of events? Why, social media, of course. Back at our hotel, I checked a Facebook group called Phoenix is for Lovebirds. And sure enough, buried in the comments of a post were specific instructions about where to find some. Although a motorcycle gang kept us awake most of the night. Excuse me. set off at dawn and found four of them exactly at that spot. The magic of Facebook. After a more relaxed breakfast than usual, we were off to find a very special pair of rare birds that has been visiting a riparian park in Phoenix the past couple of weeks. Streak-backed Orioles. We arrived at the park and went through our usual incoherent effort to find the correct location. Just as we turned the corner onto the tiger moth trail, we heard them and then saw them, feeding on oranges left by other birders. We added our own, pilfered from our Doubletree breakfast bar. While this pickup was almost too easy, it was luxurious, as it gave us more time to look for other birds. As we made our way from Phoenix to Flagstaff, we stopped along the way, happily adding a gray flycatcher and Stellar's Jay, one of my very favorite birds, to our year list. As fascinating as the birds we saw was the quick change in the landscape. Flagstaff, just two no hours north of Phoenix, sits at 7,000 feet in elevation. It's a whole other world. It is surrounded by mountains, but also ponderosa pines. It looks an awful lot like northern Maine. It was 85 degrees in Phoenix yesterday with brilliant sun and 65 there this morning. When we arrived in Flagstaff, it was 29 degrees and snowing. Today, we head to the Grand Canyon, but we will leave that for next week's update. We hope you will follow us on BigYearBirding.com. Happy birding!